Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Bayview Christian Center. We appreciate those of you who are here in person and those who have joined us or are joining us now with Facebook Live and, of course, YouTube. And um, today we are continuing our study on the subject of demons, something you don't really hear much uh, about in most churches. Um, you know, some of them, uh, they don't believe it, yeah. But what I want you to know about demons is this, is that we as believers can do something about them, okay? We have power over all the power of the enemy. Like you hear, lady. <laughs> anyway, in the past few messages, we've been talking about how every born-again believer is in a spiritual battle. The problem is, is that either most don't know it or they don't believe it, okay? And uh, because of that, they get their rear end kicked, okay? In that spiritual words, okay. But um, the, the, the thing of it is, is that we have the same spirit. If you're born again, okay, you, you believe by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, you have the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living in you, okay? Is that power or not? Amen. I mean, did you get 3G, 5G, or 7G Holy Ghost? I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, what's, what's God's favorite number? <clears throat> Seven, yes. <laughs> anyway, we have been given armor. We have been given weapons. We have been given power. Uh, I mean, we have the Word of God, the, the mighty name of Jesus, that we have power of attorney of, you know, because what did he say in Mark 16 and in Matthew 28? He said, in my name, you go, right? And everybody keeps praying, Jesus, would you, would you remove this devil? Or Jesus, would you do this? Would you do that? God, would you do that? And, then, and they use that magic tag in Jesus' name. It's not an incantation. It's not a magic abracadabra, okay? It is the power and authority of heaven. All right? And it's been given to you to use. Amen, brother. You're preaching good already. Anyway, so even though every born-again believer has been given all of these tools and power and, and all of these things, most have not been using it to fight this spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle. Like it or not, get over it. You know, I mean, you got born again, you entered into the spirit, okay? And there's somebody out there called the devil, and he don't like you, right? And you shouldn't like him either. <laughs> so quit playing with the boy and cast that sucker out, okay? You have the authority. Now, <clears throat> I've heard a lot of stuff against the brick-and-mortar church recently in the past few weeks and stuff. And I understand, you know, a lot of people get their feelings hurt if somebody doesn't say hi to them on Sunday morning and stuff like that, you know, and get all that touchy-feely stuff. But the brick-and-mortar church, I know this will surprise some of you, but it's not to get people born again. The brick-and-mortar church is to train believers how to go out and do the work of the ministry, how to em empower them, how to work. But the brick-and-mortar church overall, in general, okay, has failed miserably in teaching people how to maintain a victory that Jesus has already won. How many of you know he defeated the enemy? Amen. Huh? Amen? Amen. So we need to understand that we are not trying to get a victory. We are coming from a place of victory. Okay? And um, I, I remember, uh, I think it was in last week's um, You Already Got It teaching, you know, uh, Andrew Walmack was saying that it's easier for a group of soldiers who are on top of the hill to maintain the hill, no matter how many are surrounding the hill, than it is trying to take the hill. Okay, because they can just pick you off, <laughs> you know. So we're on the hill. We're king, king of the hill. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> anyway, so we're coming from a place and a position of victory. Many of you know you've been raised to, uh, in, in, to heavenly places in Christ. 
And, and, and I think in those verses it says, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. Okay? So take your positions as sons and daughters of God. Okay? Quit being whooped by a, uh, the enemy that's down at the bottom of the mountain. All right? Anyway, last time we finally learned who the real enemy was. You know, I told you it's not one another. It's not denomination against denomination. Our enemy, our adversary, as per the Bible, is the devil. Oh, you're talking about the devil. That, that ain't nice. Jesus. I get so tired of religion, don't you? You know, there's a difference between religion and Christianity, right? Huh? One of them will keep you in bondage and the other one will set you free, right? So it says, our adversary, the devil, in case you didn't know, God put that in there, he roams around as a roaring lion. The toothless little sucker, okay? <laughs> okay? As one. Roar? Huh? But who, who's King Jesus? He's, a, he's a, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? But see, this devil is seeking whom he may devour. That means there's some that he can't. And that is those of us who know who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ and our position in Him, the weapons of our warfare, okay? And that we have power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Boy, you're preaching good, cheek. Okay. Amen. <laughs> so again, if we know who we are in Christ and what we have in Him, there are those who cannot be devoured. Okay? And <clears throat> because all, all He has is His lies and His deception. But here's the deal. We are, we, the body of Christ, many of you know, we, we are the body of Christ. We are the hands, the feet, the mouth. The, okay? Now, now don't get offended when I say Jesus has the biggest butt in the world because most Christians are sitting around and doing nothing. Okay? So <clears throat> we are mandated to set the captives free. Alright? That means we pray for one another. When we're having some troubles, when we're, stuff is coming against us, whether it be sickness or disease or enemy coming against us, <clears throat> we are to set one another free by praying for one another, okay? Laying hands on one another. So we are to set captives free by casting out devils. <gasps> oh. <clears throat> and that includes sickness and disease, Amen. all right? You have the power over all the power of the enemy. We are to continually not just once, but continually renew our minds to the point that we know who we are and what we have. Okay? So, <clears throat> not only that, but once we get that revelation, right, we are to teach others. See, that's what was in the commission. It said, you know, go out, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, all of this kind of stuff, and teach others to do the same, okay? So we have to teach others that they too can be victorious in life. In, and listen to this, every situation of life. No, you don't mean every. Every. Okay? But you're the one who has to fight. Okay? I, you know, I've told you this before. I mean, I can get you healed on my faith. But you have to maintain it because he's going to try and come back. Yeah. Huh? We've had several testimonies to that. <laughs> and you have to say no to the enemy because you have the authority to do so. Sure. So we are to teach them that we are in a spiritual battle. That this battle is won with spiritual weapons, not carnal weapons. Okay? And I, I told you all before that <clears throat> carnal means, you know, like chili with con carne, it means chili with meat, so don't be a meathead, you know, get your mind renewed to what God, the weapons that God has provided for us, okay? We're the ones that have both the authority and the power to do the fighting, but unfortunately it's been my experience that most are not. Now, <clears throat> 
Last week we ended with Luke chapter 10 and verse 17 through 20 concerning Jesus' conversation when at the return of the 70 that went out, okay? But before I get there, I want to take you back to Adam in the garden for a few moments. Um, and we covered this a few weeks ago, but um, I feel it's needful for us to, to do this review so that we understand whenever I read Psalms 8 to you, okay? In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, it said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them, man, mankind, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth. How many is all? And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and that includes that creep the devil. That's right. Okay? All right, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, which means that both Adam and Eve had the power. All right? Man or woman has the power if you're born again. Okay? You don't have to go through a man, ladies. Okay? Amen? Amen. Okay. <laughs> and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, as we can see, God gave dominion to both man and woman, and He gave it over all the works of His hand in this earth. Okay? <clears throat> How many is all? all? So, would you agree in essence then that man, meaning mankind, was the God of this world? Little g. Okay? Not the big G. There ain't but one big G. Okay? And a few scriptures that will help for us to verify that out is Isaiah 45, 18. It says, For thus saith the Lord, who created the heavens, He is God. You're not, okay? Understand it. He's God, you're not. All right. He formed the earth and fashioned it. He established it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. Jeremiah 27, 5. By my great power and outstretched arm, I have made the earth and men and beasts on the face of it, and I will give it to whom I please. Huh? It was His, right? He created it. <coughs> Psalms 115, 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But listen to this. But the earth hath He given unto the children of men. This is why when we are here on this earth, okay, as born-again believers, quit asking God to do what He told you to do what He empowered you to do. You understand? He gave the earth to the children of men. So we are the authority in this earth as the body of Christ. So what I wanted you to see here is the fact that it's God who created the heavens and the earth, and it belongs to Him, but He gave that dominion to man or mankind. Okay. Now, let me show you why I say that um, Adam was the God of this world before he relinquished that title, that position to the devil. Keep in mind, I'm not a Greek or a Hebrew scholar, but I can read after people who are. All right? <laughs> Psalms chapter 8 and verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now, the Hebrew word translated angels in the King James and other versions, okay, is Elohim, okay? The definition of Elohim is God or God, big G or little g. It means somebody who was meant to rule, somebody who has dominion over an area, okay? And he gave that dominion to man over the earth, okay? But the I am on 
uh, in the Hebrew means it's a plural form, okay? It's kind of like our S at the end of something, okay? It's plural. So, so when we look back at uh, Genesis 1, 26, and it says, And God, Elohim, meaning more than one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, said, Let us, that's plural, right? Let us. Make man after our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. <laughs> so Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are all in agreement that man should have dominion in this earth. All right? <clears throat> but we don't want to take that responsibility. Most don't, you know. They want you to do something for them. They want God to do it all. But listen to the NLT and other translations states it like this. Psalms 5 from the NLT. Yet you made them a little lower than God. Oh, that's a little different than angel, isn't it? Huh? So, big God, big G, right? Made little G the God of this world. He gave it to the hands of men, right? Okay. And it crowned him with glory and honor. Listen, continue. Verse 6, you gave them, mankind, charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority. So you have authority, okay, in Jesus' name. The flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds of the sky, the fish of the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean currents. So by creation, okay, man was created a little lower than God, but he was given dominion, over all the earth, all of the handiwork of God's hand. And even though it makes a lot of people uncomfortable when I say God, or Adam, was the God of this world, it means that he was meant to rule, meant to have dominion. In other words, he could have cast that devil out of that garden just by exercising his dominion. Folks, you can cast the devil out of your life by exercising your dominion. Huh? When that stuff tries to come back on you, you say, uh-uh, not here. Wrong address, right? Return to sender. Huh? <laughs> Deliver that package somewhere else because I ain't receiving it, right? So man was supposed to be in charge. Now, understand, by physical birth, okay, in his fallen state, man is under the dominion of sin and Satan. Okay? That's before you're born again. After you're born again, that's no longer the case. See, the moment we are born again, we are translated out of that kingdom into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Yes? yes. See, Lucifer was a fallen angel, but by creation, he was more superior to man. Okay? And here, here's, here's the message. But God, <laughs> through the new birth, restored us, born-again believers, to the original position which Adam stood in before. And not only that position, but even better, because now we cannot be separated from God. So don't come at me with that, I can lose my salvation stuff. How many of you understand he, 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 he obtained eternal redemption? How long is eternal? How long did he say the Holy Ghost would live in you? Forever. Okay? So, nothing, I know this, is, this makes religious people mad, but nothing you can do in your flesh will change your spiritual nature. Ooh. He's preaching heresy up there. <laughs> you can't, let me put it this way. Let's see. You can't undo what God did. Okay? Well, let me ask you in the natural now. Okay? Now, see, see people are saying, okay, I've been born of the Spirit, right? <laughs> now, but if I mess up in the flesh, okay? How many of you know your spirit's holy, righteous, and without reproach, right? <laughs> but you don't believe that because you keep looking at your flesh. Huh? 
Here we go. <laughs> Is that God? No. <clears throat> but let me ask you this. In the natural, okay, you have a, a, a child born, right? Is that child ever mess, gonna mess up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. do they need to go back into the womb and start over again? How many of you ladies are saying, uh-uh, buddy? <laughs> okay. See, you don't have to do it in the spirit either. Okay? You, when you're a born again, it is eternal. Right? So, I don't know why we went there, but we did. Um, <clears throat> so, what I'm saying is, is that Lucifer is a fallen angel. By creation, he was superior to us. But through the new birth, uh, we have been restored to the original position, but better. Okay? What happened to Adam in the garden cannot happen to you if you're born again. See, Adam's spirit died. Yours can't. It's eternal. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we are we have been recreated in our spirits, yes? And we have been sealed until when? Until the day of redemption. It, it's not, you know, it's eternal life, not intermittent life like your windshield wipers, you know? You're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. Because most of us would always be out. Right? Mm-hmm. I see, I see where you guys are. <clears throat> So this is one reason why a believer cannot be possessed by the devil or any demon, okay? Now, where at? In their spirits, okay? That belongs to God, right? But in their minds and in their bodies. How many of you grew up learning the world system before you got born again, huh? You know all about how the world works, okay? So the enemy can demonize you or torment you or come against you in mind and body, okay? Um, if he, he can put thoughts in your heads, but the point is, is you don't have to keep them. You don't have to entertain them. I think it was Hagen years and years ago that said, uh, you know, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you don't have to let them nest in your hair, you know. So the same with demons. Our minds and our bodies have not yet been changed as our spirit has. Okay, And this is why we are continually admonished to renew our minds, renew our minds, renew our minds with what? The Word of God. Okay, Because the Word of God is true no matter what your situation looks like. He don't lie. And if you hold on to and exercise your authority by use of the Word of God, like Jesus did in the wilderness, what did He tell the devil? It's written. And then he would tell them what was written, okay? You don't just say, it's written, devil. He says, I know, I read it. <laughs> huh? He knows, the, hey, he, he knows the Bible well, more than we do, okay? And he'll take it and just twist it. Just that, did, did, did God say that? Or uh, maybe that's not what he meant. Huh? So he gets your mind going. <laughs> And if you'll just say what the Word says, it's the only time you know you're right. Okay? So in spirit, Scripture says, we are a new creation, a species that never, ever existed before, and this new creation is holy, righteous, and without reproach. That's me. I'm holy. And people are looking at me and saying, not you, Pastor. I knew you before. Yeah, but that's the old man. This is the new man. Okay? Look at me in spirit, not in flesh. All right? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 22 says, Yet he has now reconciled you in his body of flesh through death. In other words, he died on the cross for you. In order to present you before him, the Father, holy and blameless and without reproach. Well, that's, that's, you know, one day. Yeah, our minds are going to be changed, our spirits are going to be changed, our, our bodies are going to be changed to match our spirits when we're raised up to meet Him in the air. 
But most people don't think of themselves this way. You know, I'm, I told you before, you know, I used to, when I was in a denominational church, I used to say, look here, man, I said, it says I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, you know? And I, the first thing I would be told was, oh, brother, there's none righteous. No, not one. That was before I was born again. See, he made me righteous. He said, because uh, I'm in Christ, I have now become the righteousness of God in Christ. Because he took my sin. <clears throat> so we need a revelation of what we are in spirit. Okay? I know you look in the mirror and you say, I don't look righteous. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel righteous. It ain't about feel, it ain't about look. Okay? We need a revelation of who we are. See, it's the inner man that's the real you, not the outer man. It's the new man that's the real you, not the old man, okay? <clears throat> and some of you need to introduce your old self to your new self. Huh? Amen. Hey, uh, thank you. I got one. See, we need to put off the old man. We need to put on the new man. Isn't that what it says? And the only way to do that is to renew our minds with the Word of God, right? So, <clears throat> I don't know why we had to go there, but we did, all right? Anyway, so last week we were looking at Luke chapter 10 and verse 17 through 19, and I want to read it again so as to refresh your memories. Luke 17, uh, 10, 17 says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Wouldn't that be, I mean, you're sitting there saying, Huh? If you were one of the 70 and you just said, hey man, I mean even the devils are subject to us. And he said, yeah, I saw Satan fall. Were we in the same conversation? You know. <laughs> Behold, I give unto you, who's you? Us. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now, that's a reference to the devil and demons, okay? And over all, how many is all? All the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Huh? <clears throat> Jesus wasn't talking to the twelve here. He's talking to the 70. That means he's talking to us too. Okay? Jesus was trying to explain to them that <clears throat> the same and even greater authority that was given to Adam and Eve in the garden has been now given to the believer. Satan is fallen. The believer is not. We used to be fallen, right? Through Adam, we were fallen. Because you're either in Adam or in Christ, one or the other. But now the believer is exalted. Huh? We have been reconciled and restored with a, to a right relationship with God. What do you call righteousness? A right standing with God. Huh? And he did that. We didn't do that. Okay? And it's not based on your performance. It's based on His grace, okay? I've heard people say that grace is what God does independent of you. He did it. You didn't do it, okay? And faith is our believing and appropriating what He did in grace, okay? So we have been reconciled and restored to a right relationship with God that was lost by Adam, and we have been restored to our position of authority as sons and daughters of Almighty God. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's... I think that's when the devil comes up and you say, you know, come on. Who, who are you trying to fool, buddy? You know, <laughs> so Satan has fallen. The believer is not. We used to be, but we're not now. We are exalted. The opposite is true for Satan. He was exalted, but now he's fallen. Okay, and I think he was in that original commercial. Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and he can't. <laughs> 
since Satan lost his power, his position of a power, <clears throat> it's what he was after in the garden. See, he lost it before Adam and Eve. And then when God gave authority of all the earth to Adam, what do you think he wanted? He wanted Adam's authority. He wanted that authority back, okay? <clears throat> and he succeeded for a time, didn't he? Didn't he, t didn't he tell Jesus when during the temptation, he says, hey, this was relinquished to me and I can give it to anybody I want to. Huh? <clears throat> so at one time, Lucifer was exalted, but since that time, he has been cast out of heaven. He has been a creature of the ground. Okay? The earth is his domain. <clears throat> when Adam relinquished his authority, Satan became the god of this world instead of Adam. Now, okay, so you're following me along. All right, now in verse 19. Jesus told the 70, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. No, what does nothing mean? Nothing. nothing, zip, nada, okay. Now, do you think he's talking spiritually or physically? Spiritually, spiritually. exactly. Nothing can change what God did on the inside of you, okay? Can he come against your body? Can he come against your mind? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> what part of you is redeemed? The spirit. Okay. So again, what, what happened to Adam can never happen to a truly born again believer. And I mean that believer that is according to, that has been born again according to scripture, not according to a church doctrine or somebody's, you know, ideas. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit in our spirits, and no other spirit can touch that. Okay? So physically and mentally, God has designed that we come through every trouble, every trial, every situation, every tribulation, and He never promised we wouldn't face problems. Huh? He said, I'll be there, you know, in the fire. I'll be there in the water. <laughs> okay. But he said we would be able to rise above, overcome, more than a conqueror, okay, over these situations. Luke chapter 7, is it seven? In Luke 10, rejoice, uh, Luke 10, 20. Rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus is trying to get them to understand that it shouldn't be that big a thing to cast out a devil. Okay? Now, I understand there was a lot of demon, you know, there was a lot of demon activity back then. I mean, of course, they're all over in Africa now, right? We, we don't have that problem? Oh, we do have that problem. Oh, okay. Why do you think he gave you power and authority over all the power of the enemy? Because we do have that problem. All right? So he, he's trying to tell them, hey, it's not that big a deal. He said, the reason you have that power is because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? Because the believer has been exalted and the demons have been demoted. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen? Jesus has given <clears throat> the 70 power and He has given us power over all the power of the enemy. And we, as the body of Christ, are to do the same works that Jesus did when He was here in one body. Okay? <clears throat> Demons are under our feet. The church. Hello, church. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, not only in our physical world, but in the spiritual world also, but also in that which is to come. And he hath put all things, how many is all? All things under his feet. Where's the feet? On the body. <laughs> we are the body. And gave him to be head over all things to the church. Hello, church. Which is his body 
Okay? The fullness of him that filleth all in all. In other words, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you. Exercise it. Okay? Jesus wanted these people to know, don't just rejoice in the fact that you can cast out demons. Rejoice more that you are redeemed. Okay? Every believer's name is written in the Lamb's Book of Lies. Satan's is not. Huh? Every believer will spend an eternity with God. Satan will not. Okay? So anytime he comes against you, remind him of his destiny. Say, I'm going to heaven, devil. How about you? Huh? <laughs> now, a few weeks ago, I promised, uh, in the time I have left here, I promised to show you the three falls of Satan. I'm not going to be able to finish it today. Of course, you know, these things take time. So, <clears throat> there are three falls of Satan, two which have already occurred, and one yet to come. Okay, all three of them are mentioned in this Luke chapter 10. In verse 18, Satan, uh, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So, his first fall occurred before the world began, as we know it, okay? Uh, <clears throat> because he was Lucifer, and then he was Satan in the garden, right? After the creation of the world. And <clears throat> this is why he was called the serpent in the garden instead of Lucifer. Uh, so in his first fall, Satan lost his position of authority, okay? His position as the cherub, okay? Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the what? To the ground. Which didst weaken the nations? I often wonder, you know, it, this hadn't happened yet. <laughs> there were no nations yet, so I don't know about all of that uh, speculation about pre-Adamic and all that. Anyway, verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart. Now, I, I want you to understand this is outright rebellion. Okay? <clears throat> now, if you have a lot of eyes in your life, this is outright rebellion. Okay? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou, hast, thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Huh? His destination. All right? God declared it. It's going to be that way. I've heard, never mind, I don't even want to go there. Uh, <clears throat> this passage it, it explains that a long time before Adam and them were in the garden, um, because it preceded the name Lucifer, okay, where Satan, the name of his fallen state, all right? So Lucifer meant the light bearer, but it, he was never created as the light, Who's the light? See, <laughs> he's called son of the morning. And it's only because Jesus was shining through him. Okay? The word son means offspring. Okay? Jesus created him. And the morning uh, is a reference to Christ. Okay? Lucifer was created by the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, uh, nothing created by him, that, for him, all that. But... It says, how art thou cut down to the ground? Lucif Lucifer's position has never changed from the time he was cast down out of heaven and hit the ground. Okay? He's been on the ground ever since. Okay? Ezekiel 28, 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the ox, uh, onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day thou wast, what? Created. So, he is not equal with God. A lot of people said, well, you know, it's good and evil, good and evil, good and evil. He was created, okay? God was not, all right? And this is talking about a time 
before the garden. All right? He had all of these things. He was in the garden of God and all of that. Okay? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. In other words, this was a position that God placed him in. Okay? Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in all thy way uh, from uh, in all thy ways from the day thou wast created until iniquity was found in thee. Now I've heard people say, "Well, you know, God created the devil." No, He didn't. He created Lucifer, but iniquity was found in Lucifer, and he was cast down. And he became the devil, the deceiver, the serpent, the dragon, all of these things. Because he sinned, because he rebelled against God. Okay? Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise. In other words, boy, look at me. Look at everything I reflect. I mean, man, when you look at me, you have to kind of get your sunglasses on because I am so bright. Okay? But it was the reflection of Christ. It wasn't him. But he, he thought it was him. After a while, there's a lot of preachers who think it's all about them. It ain't. It's about Christ in us. Okay? It, I've heard, <laughs> I was amazed. I, in fact, I almost fell out of my chair laughing. <clears throat> there was a, a pastor one time who said, you know, I'm getting old. I just don't know what God's going to do when I die. And I'm sitting there saying, you know, he, he'll probably just get somebody else. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, how arrogant, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's not about you. It's about him. All right? So, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. In other words, this passage says that every stone was Lucifer's covering. In other words, he was entrusted with all the riches of the earth. These are all things of the earth, aren't they? When Lucifer fell, his position was given to Adam. Authority over all the earth. When Adam failed, God sent the last Adam, Jesus Christ. He didn't fail. He succeeded totally. Okay? And he <clears throat> reinstated every born-again believer's authority and power in this earth that he meant for Adam to have. Okay? No wonder Satan hates Christians. But he really only hates the ones who are coming against him. Because the rest of you guys are... Hey, let it happen. Oh, the devil did this, and the devil did that, and the devil did this. Well, quit telling people what the devil did and tell the devil to stop. Yeah. You got the power, okay? Do it. Exercise it. Believers need to stop comparing Satan as if he were the Goliath, this big thing, okay? It only took a man with a sling, you know? And the power of God behind it. You know, right, right between the eyes, man. And he can do it with you too. Satan is already defeated. He is not that big a deal. And that's what Jesus was telling these seven. <coughs> He's under our feet. He has lost his power. He has lost his authority. Lucifer held a position, rebelled, and lost it. God created man to hold that position that Lucifer once had. And through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the born-again believer has been reinstated to this position of authority, and that is you. Amen. Amen. In his second fall, Satan lost his authority. Okay? First when he lost his position. Second fall, he lost his authority. And authority operated... <clears throat> The authority that he was operating in was the authority that he took from man. Okay? See, God doesn't, God didn't say, oh no, that's not, that's, that's not, that's not going to happen and take that authority when man lost it, did it? It said gifts and callings of God are without repentance. It was just in the wrong hands. Okay? How many of you know there's a lot of government positions that are in the wrong hands? Okay? 
So <clears throat> what he did was he deceived Adam and Eve and he stole that position from them. And he took it from them, but he did it by deception. Okay? He, he twisted the word of God. Hath God said, uh, you won't die. What did God say? Eat it and die. Huh? <laughs> so Jesus came and he got it back legally. See, Satan tried to give it to him. He said, hey, I can save you a lot of time. You don't have to go to the cross. You know, just, just bow down and worship me and I'll give you all of it. Right? And now what he said? Uh, here, I'll give it to whoever I want to. And what did Jesus say? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only. Him thou shalt serve. So the second fall is found in verse 19. Behold, I give unto you, the believer, power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, Jesus gained dominion over him at the cross. In Matthew 28, he says, All power and authority has been given to me, Jesus talking, right? In heaven and in earth. Therefore you go in my name, in my authority, my power. Huh? He wouldn't tell you to if you couldn't. All right? I mean, he's not going to tell you to do stuff just because it sounds good. It's spiritual, you know. Got enough of that crap going on in Christianity. <clears throat> See, Jesus gave dominion over the enemy at the cross, and he gave that power and authority back to the believer. Satan's third fall will occur in the future and found in verse 20. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. So, Satan will never, ever again share in the eternity with God. Our names are written in heaven. His isn't. Again, remind him of his destiny and his stupidity for trying to, trying to outdo God. Give me a break. You know? But don't we do those things ourselves? Huh? See, I think the first lesson every Christian should learn is he's God and you're not. Huh? But we want our way. We want our will. We want... We want, we want, we want. Uh, that, see, I, I believe that Christians pray wrong so much when they, when they tell God what they want. Huh? I mean, it's like they can just drop off their laundry list with God and say, okay, I'll see you when I need something else. Huh? Preaching good, buddy. <clears throat> okay, Luke, Luke 11. Chapter 20, But if I, Jesus talking, with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. And when a strong, arm, uh, strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he should come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all of his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. God's intention has been for the church to rule over Satan and his army, not for the church to wait for Jesus to do it, to ask Jesus to do it. God, would you get rid of this? Would you take care of this? Would you? He said, no, you go. You do it. You lay hands on the sick. You cast out the devils. Huh? Well, what if it doesn't work? That's unbelief, and that's a lie from the devil. Okay? What did the Word of God say? Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover, okay? So you have, to, you have to figure out who you're going to believe. See, the passage says, <clears throat> but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, it must be demeaning to the devil, to the, to the, to the devil when somebody says, I, I cast you out. I have authority to do that. And you have to go. It said, submit yourselves unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. flee. Okay? So, <clears throat> The finger of God represents the least amount of power of God. All right? Some believers think that they have to fast for two or three weeks before they can cast out a devil. Religion taught you that. Now, you may want to email me on this, but religion teaches the doctrine of devils. Huh? Not Christianity. Religion. Okay? 
Your traditions make God, the Word of God none effect, in other words. Okay? God used His hand to create the earth, but He used His arm to raise Jesus from the dead. Huh? Can you see God flexing? <laughs> see, what Jesus is telling the 70, He says, it's time for every believer to take their position and authority as sons and daughters of God and cast out devils. Um, don't get the impression everything is a devil. It isn't, okay? You have to learn to discern. But anybody who, Jesus is saying, anybody who accepts me can operate in this power because John 14, I didn't put it up here, but John 14 says, He that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also, right? And greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. Why? Because he was, when he was here, he was the only body of Christ. And now that he is with the Father, we are the body of Christ. Okay? But people are saying, oh yeah, what about them greater works? Hey, shut up about the greater works and start doing the works first. Huh? Satan was the strong man who had his house protected, but Satan has meant a stronger one than he <laughs> and I want you to understand this. It wasn't Christ that he meant, the Son of God. It was a man anointed with the Holy Spirit because that is our pattern. A man, a woman anointed with the Holy Spirit has the power over all the power of the enemy. Okay? Verse 22. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, which he trusted, and divideth his spoils. The stronger, of course, is Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus took all of Satan's armor and divided the spoils among the believers. He got back the authority. He got back everything that was lost in Adam. So today we have the armor. Satan doesn't. We have the weapons. Satan doesn't. Okay. We have authority. Satan doesn't. Okay. All he has is deception. But we have been so duped in our minds that we think he's some big bad Goliath and he's not. We are. Amen. Amen. Huh? I got a few more things I want to say about this, but we'll have to pick it up here next time. Uh, actually, in two weeks. Are you learning anything? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> next week, Charlie Shidey will be bringing his first message here at Bayview Christian Center. So come on out and, and um, support him and all of that. Uh, we'd like to thank you for joining with us this morning in person and, of course, on Facebook Live broadcast. Uh, if you would like to be on our weekly message email link, uh, you can contact us at bayviewcc at comcast.net or by going to our website at bayviewcc.org. If these messages have blessed you, how many of you know the difference between like and share? Share, share, okay, get rid of like, share. <laughs> you can find them on Facebook Live and YouTube channel under Bayview Christian Center. Uh, I'd like to remind you of Wednesday evening's Bible study at 7 p.m., the book of Revelation. Also, uh, today at 2 p.m., I imagine AWOL is going to be ministering again since he's back in town. Uh, they will be at Scotty's on the Bay on 3202 Marina Bay Drive in League City. And um, if you are interested in knowing more about who you are and what you have in Christ, I suggest that you meet at JP and Flores House Thursday night at 7 p.m. Uh, at 1123 Tangle Bar Drive in Seabrook. And uh, we're going through the Andrew Womack series. You've already got it, so quit trying to get it. And believe me, it is a total different mindset than normal Christianity. Okay? Totally. And um, anyway, if you would like to go to that, please contact JP at 713-423-5898 so that he knows how many printouts um, to prepare for people. Again, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. And until next time, God bless. Amen.